David for your wonderful prelude. Um, as you guys know, Debbie has been out, this is her third week. She was out the first week unplanned, the second two were planned. So happy to let you know Debbie is feeling better and we'll be back next week and we look forward to having her. But thank you David for being with us today. Um, we have a number of things going on this week. We have all the regular things of newsletter being due, uh, quilters, choir practice, Bible study, Welka Executive Board, all of that you can find in your bulletin. We have a number of additional things going on. First off, thank you to any and all who participated in the Scouting for Food drive that the Boy Scouts did here over the past weekend week. Um, we are very grateful and they are still counting how much uh, they received and we'll let you know as soon as we know, but I'm sure that it was a very good turnout. Um, other things coming up. Some of you might have seen in your emails a link to a survey, an online survey that if we do that, if we have 10 people fill out that survey, we can get a $200 gift card for the church to use. We have not determined a use for that yet because we do not have it yet. Um, so please do feel free to fill out that survey. Um, it's pretty short, maybe 15 minutes or so, um, just about worshiping here. Um, if you have any questions or if you would like to fill out the survey but you're not so computer savvy, let me know and I can help you out. Um, the last day to do that is November 22nd, this Friday. A number of other things are going on. Uh, first off, I think today is the last day if you would like to donate money for Bread of Life for Turkeys. I think today is the last day that we are collecting that money. That money can go in the turkey-shaped basket in the back. Um, we are also still collecting socks for Urban Promise. Please feel free to donate in the back. The box is back there. We also have an assorted list of items for the Lutheran Senior Housing in Pensacola. There's a list of items in the back on the left. Um, and you can contact Sandy Torres Suarez for drop off and pick up. 
Um, we have a coffee hour today. So if you're like, man, I'm really getting hungry as we're sitting here talking about everything, fantastic. Please come join us downstairs for coffee hour after worship. Um, it should be a lovely time. I'm sure there's an amazing spread with way, we have a way large amount of food for us to all enjoy. So please do come down and do that. Um, we also will be having um, the sign up for the angel tree is downstairs. So we are participating with the angel tree at Bread of Life Food Pantry. Um, so if you are interested in participating in that, please come downstairs. You can pick the angel, which will tell you, you know, the uh, age of the child, gender of the child, what they're looking for. Um, it's really a great way to help make sure that those who don't have the money to have a lovely Christmas have what they would like. Um, so it's a really wonderful cause, and we invite you to come downstairs and pick that up. Um, Boy Scouts are selling poinsettias. See Bill. He knows lots of information about it. The poinsettias are always lovely. Um, if you've been in the Miller House over the past few weeks, we know that the heater is not working. Good news is the heater should be fixed this Thursday. So if you don't need to come to Miller House on Thursday or Friday, maybe stay away while the heater's getting fixed. Um, but we are very excited for that to occur. Um, there is a heater in there now that is making it more livable. So quilters, you should be okay tomorrow. It should be a more comfortable temperature. Um, and I think finally, before birthdays, next week we will be having a baptism. Um, so we, next week we will be baptizing Charlie Fields, uh, the daughter of Rob and Alyssa, um, granddaughter of Debbie and Jan, and we are so excited to have that happen. And they are graciously inviting all of us to join them downstairs after the service for a luncheon. So plan ahead, it should be wonderful. Um, and join us, because nothing's more exciting than a baptism. Any other announcements that I missed? No, Paul Sojewski. Yes, thank you. Um, for those of you who haven't heard, uh, longtime members of Bethany, Paul and Betty Sojewski, we are praying for them and their family. Paul passed away yesterday, Friday, Friday. Um, and so we are praying for Betty and for all of their family and friends during this time. And as we hear more about any arrangements or what will be happening, we will be sure to keep you abreast. So, prayers for their family. We also have a number of birthdays this week. Um, so very happy birthday this week to Melva, Arlene, Tracy, and Carol. Happy birthday, y'all. Any final announcements? Wonderful. With that, I invite you to please rise as you're able as we begin our service with the order of confession and forgiveness of sin. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all of our sin and whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves to the power of sin. We are very sorry, sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn our sins against you and uphold us by the Spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. May Almighty God strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Amen. We continue with our gathering hymn, 
Alleluia, Alleluia, give thanks found on the back of your bulletin. Such as has never occurred 
since nations first came into existence. But at that time, your people shall be delivered. Everyone who is found written in the book, many of those who slept in the dust of the earth shall awaken. Some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the sky, and those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. We will now read responsibly from Psalm 16. Protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I have said to the Lord, you are my Lord, my, my good above all other. All my Lord, I pray to God, may I do for that are not men, upon those who are known to belong to me. But, do, but those who run after other gods shall have their troubles multiplied. I will not pour out a drink over me such as I Never take the angels on my lips. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. It is you who uphold my lot. My family is clothed with such a sin. Indeed, I have a rich inheritance. I will bless the Lord who gives me con console. console. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me. Because God has my right hand, I shall not be shaken. My heart therefore <coughs> is glad, and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. For you will not abandon me to the grave, nor let the Holy One see the sin. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. The second reading comes from Hebrews 10, Hebrews chapter 10. Every priest, every priest stands day after day at his service, offering again and again the same sacrifices that can never take away sins. But when Christ had offered for all time a single sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God, and since then has been waiting until his enemies would be made a footstool for his feet. For by sin time, sorry, for by a single offering, he has per perfected for all time those who are sanctified. And the Holy Spirit also testifies to us for after saying, this is the con covenant that I will make with them. After those days, says, the Lord, I will put my laws in their hearts, and I will write them on their minds. He also adds, I will remember their sins and their lawless deeds no more. Where there is forgiveness of these, he, there is no longer any offering for your sin. Therefore, my friends, since we have confidence to enter the sanctuary by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he offers open for us through the cur curtain that is through his flesh and since we have a great priest over the house of god let us approach with a true heart and full assurance of faith with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who had promised is faithful. And let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please rise as you're able for the gospel. Hallelujah. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Hallelujah. The Holy Gospel from Mark, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. 
As Jesus came out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what large stones and what large buildings. Then Jesus asked him, Do you see these great buildings? Not one stone will be left here upon another. All will be thrown down. When he was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked Jesus privately, Tell us, when will this be, and what will be the sign that all these things are about to be accomplished? Then Jesus began to say to them, Beware that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name and say, I am he, and they will lead you astray. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. This must take place, but the end is still to come. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines. This is but the beginning of the birth pangs. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. Do I have any kids that want to come up for a children's sermon? Hi, Marley. How are you? Oh my goodness, I'm so glad you're good. I have a question for you. Do you remember a time that you were really afraid? Yeah? You wanna tell me about it? You don't have to. No? Okay. How about I tell you about a time I was really afraid? Does that sound good? So one time, when I was about your age, there was this really, really, really big thunderstorm. And my dad wasn't home from work yet. Right? So I probably shouldn't have been home alone, but I was, me and my sister, and there was this really, really big thunderstorm, and Dad was going to be coming soon, but the power went out. And I was so scared. Right? The thunder was really, really loud, and the lights were out, and my sister's freaking out, and I'm supposed to know what to do. That's really scary. Right? I didn't know what to do. And so all I did was I uh, pretty much sat down and cried. That's about all I did. Right? Whenever you're really scared, do you normally know what to do? No. When you guys are really scared, do you normally know what to do? Run. No. Right? When we're scared, when we are too upset, we don't know what we're supposed to do. We can be really overwhelmed and have hard times thinking clearly, right? Right, so a lot of times when we're younger, when we're like your age, we're told to go find a parent or a trusted adult, right? That's normally what I did when I was scared, when I was younger. Is that a lot of times what you might do? Yeah. But sometimes there's no one there, right? And that's really scary. And our, our reading today, is going to talk to the adults about what we do when things are really, really scary and we don't know what to do, right? And so we might be tempted to do what I did when I was little, what a lot of us like to do, and just not know and just get frozen, right? But our reading is going to talk to the adults about how to keep some hope when things are scary, okay? Do you normally think that when it's really scary that everything's all done and this is all it's ever going to be? Or do you think it's going to get better eventually? It's going to get better eventually, right? Yeah. And so what we're going to hear about in the big sermon is a little bit about that. About how we can keep that hope that things are going to get better eventually. All right? So I think you and I, we've got it, right? And we just got to remind ourselves and everybody else about that. Sound good? Awesome. So remember when things are really, really scary and you get a little overwhelmed, but it's not going to stay that way. Okay? Awesome. How about we pray? Dear God, Dear God thank, you so God, much thank you so much for being with us, for being with us and, helping us and helping us even when things are scary. Even when things are scary. Help, us help us to trust you and, trust you. and help other people. In your name we pray. Amen. Awesome. Thank you, Marley. Wars and rumors.
numbers of wars, natural disasters, nation against nation. Did Jesus have today's newspaper? <laughs> I mean, I look at the news and everything seems to match up, doesn't it, right? We have wars and rumors of wars across the globe. In the past day, just the past day, 37 earthquakes that are strong enough to be felt have shaken our planet, and that's a, that's a low day. Over 700 million people go hungry every day, even if famines aren't quite the same way they were back then. That's approximately one in every 11 people worldwide. These things are not new, right? We hear about wars and rumors of wars, natural disasters, and nations rising against nations, but these are not new situations. When this gospel was written in the second half of the first century CE, Rome had destroyed the temple, earthquakes and volcanoes had destroyed Pompeii and at least one other town that we know of. Famines and all of these things were daily occurrences for many people. The audience of the Gospel of Mark likely felt that Jesus was speaking directly to them, just the same as we can. Because that's the interesting thing about this genre. This chapter of Mark is often called the Little Apocalypse. It has elements that things like um, the book of Daniel or the book of Revelation, any of those books that we think about talking about the end of times, it has some of those elements, right? And that's the interesting thing about this genre of apocalypse, right? If you look up the word apocalypse in a dictionary today, it's an event involving destruction or damage on an awesome or catastrophic scale, right? We all know that one. But when we speak of biblical apocalypse, we're using the original meaning of the Greek word apocalypse, uncover or reveal. That's literally what the word means, uncover. So when we're talking about biblical apocalypses, like this chapter of Mark, the book of Daniel or Revelation, all of these aren't really talking about the damage. They're talking about uncovering the way God is present, even amidst pain and suffering talking about uncovering the ways that God is hidden in those pains. It's a little bit of a cliche, but there's a phrase in some Christian circles that if it's not good, God is not done. Like I said, a little bit of a cliche, but if we truly believe in the goodness and mercy and love of God, if we truly believe that God looked around at the world and said, it is good, then we have to believe that despite the destruction that occurs around us, we have to believe that God is not done. Because that's the beauty of passages like today's gospel. The wars and destruction and suffering is not the end. You've heard it, right? And so what do we do? When we pick up the news every day and we see reports of suffering and devastation, how do we react? Jesus says, when you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. Do not be alarmed. It's not a common phrase in the Bible. You know, much more common is the phrase, do not be afraid, right? That one's in there something like 365 times, one for every day of the year. Um, that is a really common phrase. But do not be alarmed. Three places in the entirety of the Bible. This verse in Mark, the parallel verse in Matthew, and once in 2 Thessalonians when the author implores the reader not to be shaken or alarmed at the coming of the Lord. And so we wonder, why wouldn't they just say, do not be afraid? Why this phrase? Why this wording? The Greek word here is often still seen in the word turbulent. The word originally meant the cry or noise of a tumultuous multitude, to make a clamor or a tumult, to disturb, trouble, or terrify. 
or when it's used passively, it's translated as alarm. Don't be so mixed up and terrified that you can't respond. Don't be so afraid that you're frozen. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not find yourself that emotionally turned on. Don't find yourself so disturbed and terrified and troubled. When you hear bad news, don't fear that it is the end. Don't find yourself giving up or giving in to the lie that nothing would matter. Because these things are not the end. I talked about it with Marley. When you're really, really scared, it's easy to think that this is it, that nothing is ever going to change. Even if we logically know that that's not true, we can get caught in it. But today's passage reminds us that it's not the end. These apocalyptic texts can be difficult and frightening. None of us want to hear that the wars and destruction and pain aren't going anywhere anytime soon. Right? But these texts can also reassure us. Because if we believed that the wars and destruction and the pain were the end, why should we continue to live any differently? Why would we continue to love our neighbor and care for the environment and work for peace if it's all going down anyway? If we believe that the wars and destruction and pain are all that is left, we would have no hope. But Jesus reminds us that these events have always occurred. Humanity has had wars, natural disasters, and national conflict since the very beginning. It's been thousands of years. And so even though, for those of us living through these things, it feels like the end, Jesus reminds us that God is not done. God was not done 2,000 years ago when the temple was destroyed. God is not done today. Even though it can feel like there's no point in caring for our neighbor or working for a better future, Jesus calls us to this work. Because it is not the end. We find ourselves right back where we were last week with Frodo in Lord of the Rings and the quote that I shared. I wish it need not have happened in my time, said Frodo. So do I, said Gandalf, and so do all who live to see such times, but it is not for them to decide. All we have to decide is what to do with the time that is given us. I wish that we lived in a time of peace and safety and security for the whole world. I wish that I wasn't anxious to look at the news regardless of what news source every day. I wish that photos and videos of destruction and wars didn't find their way onto my social media feed. I wish that I could walk out this door and not find people in our very community who are hungry and cold. I wish that none of this was happening. But that's not ours to decide. What is ours to decide is whether we will put our faith in God whether we will believe that our fear and our terror and alarm, even though they say that it's the end, that it is not the end. Whether we choose to believe that the future can be brighter, that the kingdom of God comes even in the midst of all of this. There's a story that when asked what he would do if he knew that the world would end tomorrow, that Martin Luther said that he would plant an apple tree today. <clears throat> it's likely falsely attributed. <clears throat> Luther probably didn't actually say that, but a truly beautiful story nonetheless. If the world was going to end tomorrow and I knew it, I'd plant an apple tree today. I would continue to work and hope for a brighter future. When we feel like the world is ending, when we feel like nothing could possibly change, let us continue to trust in God and in the future that God has promised. Let us continue the work of loving God and loving our neighbor. Let us plant trees and make plans and put our trust 
in the promises that we have been given, may we remember that no matter how scary things might be, it doesn't last forever. Thanks. We continue with our hymn of the day, This Little Light of Mine, hymn number 677. Please rise as you're able. abundant love for the world, let us pray for our neighbors, the church, and all of creation. O oh God, in the washing of water, you set us free from the power of sin and death. Unite all the baptized in the covenant you have made with us, as we strike for your justice and peace in all the earth. Merciful God, receive our prayer. By your merciful might, you sustain all creation. Stir us from <coughs> complacency, complacency with the harm we inflict on the earth and urge us to ad adopt sustainable ways of life that protect and restore our planet. Merciful God, receive our prayer. With the selfless power, you protect all who take refuge in you. As nations rise against nations, defend all who are displaced or affected by war or violence, especially empower all people and nations to pursue peace. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. In your presence, you give fullness of joy. Care for all for whom joy feels distant. Be present with persons expression, experiencing depression, anxiety, addiction, or any mental 
illnesses, especially Phyllis Hess, Linda Patton, Melva Beckler, Erna Brower, Stephen Moore, Judy Kohler, Elsie Hoffman, Dawn and Donna Flack, Taya Williams, Mike Grauer, Jaden Ross Flack, Luke Young, Jack Flynn, Carl Schwager, Debbie Shun, Pat Horn, Garwood Bacon, Dan Schoen Jr., family and friends of Paul Sojuski. Bring them healing and wholeness, merciful God. Receive our prayer. Through the years, <clears throat> through the years you have gathered your church and this community for worship, fellowship, formation, and service. Enable us to look beyond the walls of our buildings to perceive where you are calling us for it. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. With Thanksgiving, we remember Elizabeth of Hungary and all. Saints and angels who delight in your everlasting presence as their lives inspire ours, provoke us always to love. Holding fast the confession of our hope in you, merciful God. Receive our prayer. We offer our prayers to you, gracious God, trusting in your boundless love for all that you have made through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. I invite you to please rise if you're able. May the peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. I invite you to share a sign of Christ's peace with one another. And at this time, I invite you to please be seated as we prepare to receive our offering.
Give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, the Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ has risen. Christ, Christ will come, will come again. again. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us to evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Meeting today will take place around the altar rail. Please come forward at the direction of the ushers. Kneel or stand as you desire. Receive the bread from myself and wine or grape juice from our communion assistant. If you would like to receive at your seat, please just let our ushers know and we will bring the communion to you. Regardless of where you are in your faith journey, this is Christ's table set for all people. And all people are welcome to take place in this part, in this feast. If you would not like to receive communion, you are invited to come forward for a blessing. Just gesture with your arms like so. With all of that being said, Taste and see that the Lord is good. Thanks be to God. Please rise as you're able. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. We continue. Wait, no, we don't continue yet. <laughs> Let us pray. Faithful God. You have spread before us a feast of rich food and drink in the body and blood of your Son. Now send us out to labor with you in service to the world you have made and among the people where you have made your home. In Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, amen. Amen. And now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. And now, we continue with our sending hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness, hymn number 733.
Sie.